All right, what's up guys? I am here bringing you my updated Zombie World deck profile. It's only been one week since I uh, uploaded the last one, but this deck actually got a reasonable amount of support in uh, Battles of Legend. So I guess let's get started. We play, this time, two copies of Doom King. I used to play three, now I only play two. Uh, very good card. There's a boss monster of the deck. Uh, when it's sent to the graveyard during the next standby phase, you can bring it back uh, for free out of the graveyard. And then it's really, really scary effects are that uh, whenever a monster effect is activated of a zombie, you can either negate that effect or banish a card in the, on the field or in the graveyards. And of course, you are playing Zombie World, so everything in the graveyard, in both graveyards and on the field are all zombies. Uh, even if your opponent hand traps you, remember hand traps activate in the graveyard. Uh, so if your opponent hand traps you, you can... Activate this effect, negate the hand trap. Really, really scary card whenever Zombie World's on the field. Uh, next, we've got three copies of Glow Up Bloom. This is the enabler, one of the main enablers of the deck. Uh, when this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish it, and then special. And if Zombie World is on the field, you can special summon a level five or higher zombie monster uh, from your deck. Or if you don't have Zombie World, you can just add it to your hand. Um, normally, and hopefully as much as possible, you want to just special summon the monster. That way you can enable some crazy combos. Uh, next we've got two copies of Necro World Banshee. Uh, this is another one I used to play at three, but overall I just decided, you know what, I think it's more consistent that you have one. Uh, when this card is, when the, if this card's in the graveyard, quick effect, you can banish it and then activate a zombie world directly from your deck or hand. Uh, also, if this card's on the field, uh, it protects Zombie World, which is, is an effect that a lot of people forget, uh, but it's half decent. Most of the time you won't have it on the field, but it's a fairly decent effect. A uh, very good card, one of the also main enablers. Uh, next, we've got three copies. We have a Sharanui package. We have three copies of Sharanui Solitaire. Uh, this card you contribute. Uh, well, you can actually tribute any zombie monster on your side of the field. And then special summon a zombie with zero defense. So you can actually attribute one of your other zombies if you really wanted to. Um, uh, and then if, if this card is banished, you can target a uh, zombie that's banished and special summon it, which is a decent effect. Uh, Sharanui monster, but we only play one other Sharanui monster, and it is Sharanui spirit master. Uh, this card, when it's banished, uh, you can... Uh, you can pop a card on the field, which is a really good card. Uh, it's it's good with the Sharanui Trap that we play. It lets you basically pop three cards at the end of the whole chain. Uh, but it's a really it's a really good extender for that. Um, that's mainly the reason you're playing Spirit Master. And then we've got Unizombie. This is the card that you will use Sharanui Solitaire to go into. Uh, you tribute usually a sp normal summon Sharanui Solitaire, summon this, and this card is just broken. It's one of the best zombie support cards ever released. It's like almost as good as Mizuki, that's how good it is. Uh, basically, one effect is you can target a card on the field, increase this level by one, uh, and if you do, you discard a card. And then the other effect is uh, you can send a zombie from deck to graveyard and then increase a level by one. You can target itself, so it can be the only monster on the field, and you can just increase its levels. So the one to discard to increase a level, sometimes you want to discard a Doom King, sometimes you want to discard a Necro World Banshee, sometimes you want to discard a Glow Bulb, some other stuff, Mizuki, just get stuff out of your hand into the graveyard quickly. And as for sending stuff to the graveyard out of the deck, uh, you have a lot of different options here. These are all decent options, not the Sharanui ones, but all the Glow Bulb and the um, Necro World Banshee are usually the ones you're going to be sending. But definitely very, very good there. Uh, next, we've got three copies of all-time, one of the best zombies, Mizuki. Uh, this card's like a monster reborn for the entire deck, for the entire, like, <laughs> type for all of zombies. It's really good. It's been used forever. Uh, basically, you banish it out of the graveyard, and then you get to uh, special summon a zombie from your graveyard. Remember, Zombie World makes everything in your graveyard a zombie. So even if you don't have a zombie in the graveyard, you still get to special summon it from the graveyard. Uh, we've got one Gozuki. Uh, this card is awesome too. Um, uh, during the main phase, you can uh, send a zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard, which is a really good effect. And then if this card sent to the graveyard, you can banish it. You can banish one zombie monster from the graveyard, except itself. And then special summon one zombie monster from your hand, uh, which is a decent extender. Again, 
Uh, it's something that you can use uh, Unizombie. You use Unizombie, send this from your deck to the graveyard, summon something from your hand. It's not bad. I mean, it's it's at one, so it's kind of like a... Uh, you just kind of use it when you get it. And, it. and it can send a card from the deck to the graveyard, which is also pretty decent. Uh, next, we've got three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. Uh, it, number one, it's a zombie. Number two, it's the best hand trap in the game. Uh, it's the most versatile. Uh, overall, overall, it's the most... It, overall it's the best and it's overall it's the most versatile i don't know if it's actually the best probably drill uh drill and lockbird is better in theory but what's good about ash blossom is that it kind of uh it can hit almost any deck there isn't a single deck that avoids it uh next we've got three cop uh, three copies of cyframe gear gamma and one copy of cyframe uh driver this card i love i was going to play ghost bell and for a while, I thought that was like the right, that was absolutely the right decision. But truthfully, in the current meta that we have, there are a lot of decks that rely heavily on effect monsters. Stuff like, well, effect monsters going off. Stuff like Thunder Dragons. They need certain monsters, Sir Yuja, to go off. They need certain things to go off. Uh, you know, the LP Pisty, Agro Pain. They need certain cards to go off. Uh, same Orcus. They need Nightmare Mermaid. And I like this card because it can't get uh, called by the grave. So this card is disgusting against Orcus because they summon Mermaid. You summon this to the field. You summon this to the field. And they can't they can't really do anything about it, which is really awesome. You summon these two to the field, and basically their, their chain is over. Um, and it's very difficult to work out of that hole because they, they devote a decent amount of resources to summoning a... Um, two monsters and then going through the whole combo and you really need to go through mermaid if you get rid of mermaid you stop their chain uh but definitely i like cyframe gear gamma also we play an extra deck monster that makes this card even better uh next off to our spells we got three copies of zombie world obviously an amazing card makes all monsters uh on the field on both player side of the field and in both graveyards zombies everywhere everything's a zombie except for of course in the hander deck or extra deck and on top of that in this effect a lot of people forget someone in my locals made me remind like kind of reminded me about this uh neither player can tribute monsters that are trip can tribute summon um monsters except zombies so that card's really good first of all it just smacks two dracos for no reason so that's awesome uh but secondly it it means that your field can't get like uh raw sphere moded and it can get kaijued in any way, which is really, really awesome. Uh, you just gotta, a, a lot of this deck is just enforcing little things like that. That's that's the main thing about Zombie World that you got to keep in mind. You have to enforce the fact that you just made your opponent's field zombies. You made their graveyard zombies. And you have to read every one of their cards to make sure. If they're, if, if uh, like for example, Baylinx, you can't make Baylinx. You need to use a... Um, a cybers monster and you have to enforce the fact that you have you have made their entire field zombies there are a lot of xyz monsters that require for example warriors there are a lot of synchros that require like a dragon there are a lot of little things that you have to enforce there are cards that say for example bring back one cybers monster from your graveyard or or you know so something like that type specific cards and you have to enforce the fact that you just made their entire field and graveyard zombies it's very important and it's one of the great advantages of this deck. Uh, next, we've got, of course, we've got this. Two copies of Super Polymerization. Uh, first of all, we are playing the usual uh, Super Polymerization package. But on top of that, we are playing some uh, some really cool zombie cards. Um, now let me pull it out here. There's a zombie card, uh, Dragon Necro. This card right here. It just got reprinted in Battles of Legend. The new Battles of Legends set. It's very good. If you're running a zombie deck, you might as well run it. Uh, basically, you make all your opponent's monsters zombies, which is a non-targeting effect. And then you activate this. Uh, and again, non-targeting removal. Get rid of everything. Uh, get rid of the two cards you want, which is really cool. Uh, next, we've got three copies of Instant Fusion. I'll kind of get uh, to explaining this better when we get to the uh, extra deck. It's kind of... You know, we, we use basically, the only thing I'll say is that we use uh, Millennium Eyes to, uh, as a, basically our copy of Called by the Grave. I like Millennium Eyes a lot better, uh, 
I, I like Instant Fusion a lot better than Called by the Grave. Because, number one, gives you a monster on board. Number two, it gives you some versatility because you don't only have to special summon uh, the... You don't just have to special summon the Millennium Eyes. You can go into Thousand Eyes and a lot of other monsters. So I think that, in, that honestly, Instant Fusion is a lot better of an option than Called by the Grave. But again, it's up to you. You can you can use Call by the Grave. You can use Instant Fusion. You can use both. It's your life. It's your choice. You can do whatever you want. Personally, I prefer Instant Fusion. Uh, next, we've got the one of one copy of One for One, one copy of Foolish Burial. Uh, yeah, both of them, you know, facilitate. They're nice extenders. One ofs. Play more if I could. Three copies of Shirinui, uh Swallow Slash. This card is so good. It's so good. Um, this deck is a lot like maybe like a Salamangri deck to a certain degree because you basically set up kind of like these decent effect monsters and then you set up, uh, you have hopefully, you know, one, two set trap cards. Uh, you've got maybe this or maybe one other card and, uh, you always have zombie world and maybe like a super poly. You have like a decent field, but it, it it's really, really powerful. It stops your opponent from playing. This card is just disgusting. Uh, you tribute a zombie monster which is not even a bad thing for you, because usually you'll tri tribute a Doom King after you you have used its effects. Uh, so your opponent will say, like, oh, all right, you know, you've interrupted them a couple times, they'll be like, end phase. Oh, end phase, okay, you tribute, you activate this, tribute Doom King for cost, and then you get to target two cards on the field, pop those two cards, which are usually going to be set back row of some sort, and then, let's say they have a third card, you can banish a uh, the Sharanui Spirit Master, I don't know where it is down there, but Sharanui Spirit Master, uh, <laughs> it just got lost in the debris. There it is. You just banish this copy of Sharanui Spirit Master, and then you get to pop an additional card, which is just crazy. Uh, because you get to pop three cards, you get to tribute one of your zombies, and you, I mean, it's just, it facilitates the deck so well. It's one of the best Sharanui cards around. I think it probably is the best Sharanui card around, other than Solitaire. Uh, but definitely, Sharanui Swallow Slash is a very, very good card. Uh, next, in the final card, we have Rivalry of the Warlords. I love this card because sometimes you'll go first, and this card is a straight-up blowout card. Uh, the The current build that you're seeing here is a... Um, it, it's more focused on going first. You can go second without a doubt, uh, but it's more focused... Like, if you're going first, you're more than likely going to win. It's going to be far easier to go uh, win going first. Uh, but basically, this card uh, makes it so your opponent can only control one type. So what they do is, like, let's say you're playing against... I don't, I don't know what the deck is, but let's say that you're playing against something that... Let's say they summon... I'm trying to look for a card here. Uh, let's say they summon a Link Karibo. Uh, you activate Rivalry of the Warlords. This is, of course, if you have Zombie World on the field. You activate rivalry, rivalry of the Warlords, and now they cannot special summon anything. This be, this becomes a zombie because of this, and because of this, they can't summon anything but a zombie. So they can't summon a non-zombie from their hand, from their deck, or from uh, their extra deck. They cannot summon them, uh, which is a crazy lock that you create. And of course, it's a, it doesn't affect you because virtually all of your monsters. Uh, Virtually all of your monsters in your main deck are zombies anyway, and a lot of your extra deck are zombies, so it really doesn't affect you that much, and it's a disgusting lock. It's absolutely atrocious, and usually if you can create this lock of just these two cards, and maybe like a Doom King, you, you, you will usually win game one. Like, that's how, that's how amazing this lock is. Uh, very, very scary to play through and play against. It's kind of an auto win, and of course, for, for, when going second, you gotta side and be smart, and do the appropriate things, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, so next, let's go to the my favorite part. I swear I love this part, the extra deck. Uh, we're playing one copy of Millennium Eyes. Uh, this card is basically uh, called by the grave on legs. Uh, so the great thing about this card is when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can quick effect, attach that card to this card, and then negate that monster's effects. So if your opponent, let's say you summon this with Instant Fusion first, you normal summon Unizombie, you activate Unizombie to send a card from your deck to the graveyard, and your opponent activates Ash Blossom, you go, oh, okay, nice Ash Blossom. Activate this card, equip Ash Blossom to this, Ash Blossom is negated, and your effect goes through. It's like Call by the Grave, but on legs. And then afterwards, what's awesome is, uh, 
it becomes a zombie because of the zombie world, and then you can link it away for our uh, zombie link monster. So again, it's a basically a call by the grave on legs. Uh, next, then we've got the one thousand eyes restrict. This is if you're kind of forced to go second. It's very good. Uh, basically, target one of your opponent's monsters, take and, uh, and then attach it as material. Also, your opponent can attack, uh, and al also other monsters on the field cannot attack. Basically, other than thousand eyes restrict. Which is decent. Uh, usually you won't use it. Usually you'll just uh, take your opponent's monster, link this away, and your opponent's monster will go to the graveyard. But it's still decent. Uh, one copy of Mud Dragon of the Swamp. This works both as a... Uh, what is it called? A uh, instant fusion target and as a super polymerization target. Uh, basically it's two monsters with the same attribute with different types. So obviously you can't use it once Zombie World hits the field because it makes everything zombies. Uh, but... In terms of um, in terms of its uh, regular effect, uh, basically quick effect, you can target it, any card uh, on the field and then make it so um, that card you pick an attribute and that card has that attribute. Also, uh, your opponent um, cannot target monsters on the field with the same attribute as this card. So normally you'll target this card, make it like, usually dark because most of your monsters are dark. And like, let's say you you know you activate you instant fusion out mud dragon, uh, you activate mud dragon, target itself, make it dark. Now you normal summon Unizombie. You activate the effect to uh, pitch the monster from deck uh, to increase a level, and your opponent activates impermanence. Uh, they can't target monsters that are dark, so it's like free protection basically if you if you needed to. Uh, someone in my comment section actually recommended that, which you know, I thank them for that in my last video. Uh, next, we've got one Reaper of Nightmare. I love this card. It is I loved it in 2005 in goat format. I loved it. Uh, basically, in theory, it's a it's a super polymerization target, but no one ever uh, like plays these cards. But but anyway, it's a instant fusion target. Uh, you can't attack the turn you summon this card but you can bring this back from the graveyard because in an in instant fusion counts as a normal fusion summon uh so you can actually bring this back with mizuki the i don't know th like later like you let's say you link this away and then you bring it back with mizuki afterwards you can actually attack you can use this card's effect to attack and everything like that uh, so basically this card uh, can attack directly and when it inflicts battle damage you can take a card out of your opponent's hand and discard it automatically it has a very like old school effect also it can't be destroyed by battle and if it's targeted with anything it's destroyed automatically so uh do not under any circumstances activate unizombie and then activate unizombie's effect to target a card to increase the level because if you target this it'll just blow itself up automatically do not do that uh but it's a very good card otherwise uh next we've got the uh, Dragon Necro. Uh, this card basically is an instant fusion target. It's just two zombies. It's really, really good. Um, it's nice non-targeting removal. Uh, it's really good in the mirror match. Uh, if you if you do get around to playing the mirror match, which is very unlikely, but you know sometimes it happens. And then it has an effect where it can't uh, destroy a monster by battle. So this thing cannot destroy a monster by battle. But when it battles a monster, it makes that monster's attack zero, and then it makes a, it basically spawns a token. Uh, that can attack that that can attack um, and it has the attack of the monster So I guess it gives you a free monster But usually you're just gonna the smart thing to do is just to save this attack for last and then just attack uh, With this card uh, and Then we've got one starving venom dragon that winds up round uh, rounds out all of our fusions. I do not play violent chimera uh, In the main deck I would prefer to just activate zombie world and then uh, and then make this. That is my personal preference. I'm, I'm more afraid of Thunder Dragon than I am of uh, Salamangri. But if you were going to take anything out for Violent Chimera, it would be this right here. Uh, or Mud Dragon. It would be one of these two. Because these two are the least necessary out of all of them. So if you have a serious problem with Salamangrates, I would take out one of these two. So I, I just thought I'd mention that because that is important. Alright, next we've got the Synchros. One copy of Beals and one copy of Cyframe Lord Omega. So not only are we using the uh, the Gamma, but we can also make this stuff. We can make it with non. We can make it with Gamma, or we can make it without it. it doesn't even matter. 
And then also we've got, of course, the Beals. I think Beals is one of the coolest boss monsters ever printed. Uh, this deck can easily spit out spit out a Beals. Um, you just you, you have like a Mizuki, for example, and a Unizombie. You activate Unizombie, make it one level higher, and then Mizuki plus Unizombie is a free Beals. And Beals basically can be destroyed by battle or card effect, which is really good, randomly good against True Dracos, um, along with certain other decks. And then uh, Cyframe Lord Omega, everybody knows this card. It's limited to one. I play three if I could. Uh, but basically, uh, this card, quick effect, you can banish this card and one card out of your opponent's hand. In addition to that, uh, you can uh, you can during your standby phase, you can also return a card from your banished pile back to the grave, back to uh, the graveyard, which is really cool. Uh, awesome, awesome cards. And then we've got the Link Monsters. We play one copy of the new uh, Salamanger Almirage. This card isn't even a Salamanger monster as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but basically, it's just one normal summoned level 1,000 uh, 1, attack uh, monster, which is pretty decent. Um, you can use like Ash Blossom and stuff. You can use uh, some other stuff that you can normal summon. But it's a decent card. I, I, just, I, I just put it in as kind of a, a nice uh, mix-up. Uh, also, you can use the Glow Up Bloom, so you can normal summon Glow Up Bloom, link it away, summon this, activate Glow Up Bloom to get the card out of your, um, activate Glow Up Bloom to get um, Doom King out of your out of your deck, special summon it, then you can go into a zombie play there, uh, but yeah, it's just kind of a variety, we also play one Link Karibo, I used to play two Link Karibos, now I play one Alamorosh, just again, I, just for some variety. Uh, but basically, this card's quick effect is that you can target one monster you control, it can be destroyed by card effects. And then, when a card is normal summoned, when a normal summoned monster you control is destroyed by battle, you can summon this for free out of your graveyard. And this triggers a uh, Vampire Sucker's effect, which is really cool, because you'll make everything a zombie, and then it'll trigger that. Uh, then we've got Link Karibo. Uh, Link Karibo, basically, uh, everybody knows what it is. It's a level 1 monster, like this. Um... Or, or Thousand Eyes, or any of the other the other uh, Millennium Eyes. Basically, um, when your opponent attacks, you can tribute and uh, make the attack zero. Or from the graveyard, you can tribute a level one, bring this back, and uh, yeah, for free. And again, it kind of synergizes with the other rest of the deck. New card, uh, Avendred Savior. Uh, this card basically, uh, you can target one Avendred card from your graveyard, add it to your hand. Totally irrelevant to this deck. But it's another two zombies. It requires two zombies, so it synergizes with the deck very well. Uh, when this card battles a monster, you can send a monster from your deck, and uh, that monster loses attack points equal to the monster that you sent. So basically, you can send uh, ne uh, Necro Banshee, you can send Glow Up Bulb, you can send Doom King, and uh, Mizuki. Like, you can send any amount of monsters. It's a good offensive card, it gets things going. I like it as an option. Um, it's a really cool card, just quite generally for that. Two copies of Vampire Sucker. Uh, this card, when a monster is special summoned uh, from the graveyard, uh, you can, if it's a zombie, when a zombie is special summoned to either player's side of the field, uh, you can draw a card, which is a really, really cool effect because usually you'll be getting it on both players' turns. And it's basically like making your draw phase times two. Uh, also, um, its other effect is you can summon a zombie from your opponent's from your opponent's uh, graveyard to their side of the field. Usually, you don't want to use that effect in theory, uh, but sometimes, uh, and this is again, you, you really got to be thinking on your feet all day long. Sometimes that effect's not that bad because usually you don't want to give your opponent a card, right? But let's say your opponent has in their graveyard like an ash blossom. And they have on their side of the field like a large, non-targetable monster. And you have a Vampire Sucker on the field and you have one copy of Super Polymerization. You activate the effect to summon the Ash Blossom to their side of the field in defense mode. So now Zombie Summoned, you draw a free card. It doesn't even matter what it is. Let's say it's this. You summon this and now you have another card for Super Polymerization. Uh, so you can discard this for super polarization. You met this conditions act this card's activation conditions Also, they now have two monsters on the field and you can just get rid of them like that uh, So really uh, you got to think sometimes the, the effect comes up like a lot of people say like it's useless You'll never use it, but in all honesty sometimes it really has come up where I just really need to draw a card um, 
it's 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 good to have, right? It's it's a free effect, so why not have it? Then we've got the Cyframe Lord Labamba, uh, which I love. This card lets you activate Cyframe cards even when you have monsters on the field, which is really good for going first place. Sometimes you want to end on this. Uh, sometimes you'll kind of really go off in the first turn, and you'll have like all of these extra resources. And you're like sitting around saying like, what am I supposed to do with all this? You can get rid of a Doom King. You can get rid of some other stuff. Because you really sometimes have a really, really explosive play where you summon a Vampire Sucker. And then you have like two other, two or three other monsters. You're like, what, what in the world am I supposed to summon now? And why not summon this thing? And then you can activate Cyframe cards from your hand. Uh, and then Doom King's coming back during standby phase no matter what. Uh, and sometimes like... Let's say, uh, you know, you, you summon this and your opponent tries to, as soon as Doom King is about to get summoned, they try to like, uh, ghost bell you. You can just activate Psy frames from your hand, bam, and then summon that and then summon the Doom King and then summon the driver and then draw. <laughs> it's like crazy. I love it. it. It's really, really cool. I like, um, so this, this Lamba card is very, very good. I think it's going to see quite a bit of meta play. I mean, I guess we'll have to see. And then for the last card, we have the Boral Sword Dragon. Uh, really awesome card. I went for this over Borlord and Boral Load in this particular deck uh, because you already have like big boss monsters and you already have non-targeting removal, so you're not too worried about having to steal your opponent's monsters that you can't destroy. I think this is a little bit better because it'll just win you the game and you don't have to worry about any of that stuff anymore. Uh, but let's go off to the side deck. Now the side deck is great. The side deck is basically 100% for going second. 100%. Because this deck doesn't struggle to go go second, but it's like it's difficult to go second. It's far easier to go first. But we play three copies of Pinkatrops. We have three copies of the Artifact Lancia. Three copies of the Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode. Three copies of Red Reboot. Whoops. And finally, three copies of Evenly Matched. Uh, basically, this is against, you know, you, you can see it and you see the matchups, right? So this is good against Orcist. It's good against, uh, it's good against Orcist. It's good against, uh, what's that, what's that frustrating matchup? Basically, any back row deck, Orcist, Altergeist, stuff like that, Mystic Mind. This card's a really good card. Uh, same thing here. Back row decks, Orcus, Mystic Mind. Uh, Salamangre, stuff like that. You can activate it against Salamangre, OTK them. Not much they can do. Like, once you once you negate their counter trap, like, what are they really... They have no defense. They have... The only thing they have is Bailinx in the graveyard. So, red reboot there. This is definitely against Thunder Dragon and Orcus, because they put up a for, very formidable board. Uh, we've got against Thunder Dragon and Orcus. And then, like, random... Actually, the mirror match. This card's really good, too. Artifact Lancia. Uh, and then finally, of course, like I said, the Dino Wrestler Pegatrops. Uh, this card is super versatile. Best, like, going second card uh, to side in. Super duper versatile. It can deal with back row decks and with front row decks. Uh, very good card. So that winds up everything. I hope you guys enjoyed that deck profile. Really spent a lot of time uh, thinking and building on it. Uh, subscribe. We're trying to get to 1,000. Thank you.